Chef Tomatza. Good evening and welcome to Chef Tomatza. Tonight we have a treat for you. I'm making one of my favorite things and is a real crowd pleaser. So easy to make but so good. Pita crackers. I start off with this is a six pack of pita. We're going to slice it four times lengthwise. Notice I'm holding the knife to have maximum control. We have the heel of the blade here and I don't know if you can see that this way here so that instead of holding the knife like this we actually encompass the entire blade and this really gives you maximum control. Now I'm going to cut it one more time. Remember to keep your knuckles in and let the knife do the work which is why it's essential to have a sharp knife especially for this cutting job cutting this twice three times and on the narrow end once so now I'm just going to set that aside for a minute now we're going to put our ingredients together I have three quarter cup of pure virgin olive oil. You can use any type of oil you like, but I like to use olive oil for its fragrance and aroma. I have half a cup of Romano cheese. I have two teaspoons of oregano. I have two tablespoons of garlic flakes. I have one tablespoon of pure raw garlic. I have two tablespoons of sugar and two teaspoons of rosemary. Don't forget to sprinkle with salt and add pepper. Mix that up. This right here is an awesome mixture for a pizza topping, a sauce, there's so many great flavors in here, but we're going to use it to top our pitas today. Now once that's well incorporated, well mixed, you're going to need a large bowl to put this together because you need a lot of elbow room to get in there, get your hands dirty. So. Find the biggest pot that you can find in your house. You can use a cooking pot vessel as well. We're going to use this today. Nah, I'm just kidding. Maybe if you're doing 100 pitas, that'd be fine. But I have this one. And I already have another pita cut up in there. So let's put that together, all in there. Okay, and drizzle that over inside. Let's get every last bit out. I don't want to waste any of this stuff. It's like gold. All right. Oh, it smells so good. Mmm, that's making me hungry. Now, like I said, you really need to get in there, so you need a lot of room, which is why I have a large bowl here. So you've got to macerate that. So it's all evenly mixed. Now, the real trick to this recipe, I don't want to cook them, I only want to dry the pitas out. Draw out all the moisture so that it becomes like a cracker, a pita cracker. So the trick for that is you set your oven at 225 degrees. Low and slow is the way to go with this recipe. Any higher than that and they're going to burn before they're ready. These aren't even going to get very brown in the oven. They will crisp up a little bit, but they will not get charred. I cooked it once at 350, way back when, uh, during the experimental stages, and uh, it wasn't good. They would get all burnt and it wasn't good, and then the flavor just wasn't there. If you have a dehydrator, 
You can use that too because we only want to get the moisture out. There's no cooking here. So that looks great. Now I have a parchment lined cookie pan here. Put that on. It doesn't have to be spread out too evenly. Just do the best you can. Put that out. so good and even alone just to eat it like that mmm super good so we put that in our oven perfect I just removed my pita crackers from the oven after four hours approximately so it's something that you're going to want to do in the early afternoon when you have the time to keep an eye on them not something you want to do overnight certainly so after about four hours you take it out of the oven and they just look so fantastic. And what you want is a crisp mm, and a crunch and the taste. Oh, mamma mia! So good! Thank you folks for joining me. From my kitchen to yours, have a great evening. Bye.